Now, let's take a look at how to create a component in React application. So, let me first close these files. So, instead of using these default files of React, let me start from scratch. So, let me delete this source folder from this project and create my own source folder. So, let me delete this folder and create a new folder inside this login system. So, here I'm going to create a new folder with name src. Make sure the name is source. Just create this folder and inside it, I'm going to create first the entry point of this project. As I said earlier, index.js is the entry point of your React application. So let me just create that file inside this source folder. So here I'm going to create a new file with the name index.js. Make sure the name is exactly same. Don't specify anything else to this file. Otherwise, React won't find it. So just like that, inside this file, you have to call React DOM render method. So here I'm going to first import the React module. So I'm going to say here import React from and in the double code I'm going to specify the module name which is React. So using this statement I'm going to import React module inside this file. Let me just zoom this up and using this statement here I'm going to import a React class from this React module. And just out of that just down here I'm going to say import React DOM from React DOM package. I'm going to say I want to import React DOM class from React DOM package. So once I import both these packages, let me just use it. Let me add here a render method. So just down here, I'm going to say React DOM dot render. I'm going to call this method and I'm going to just pass parentheses to it and pass two parameters. As I said earlier, this method is going to take two parameters. First is the component and second is the root ID. So I'm going to first specify my component. So I'm going to first call here react dot strict mode component. This component help us from side effects. Just after that, inside this react strict, I'm going to simply call my component. But for now, let me just leave everything as it is and specify here a comma and pass second parameter. As a second parameter, you need to specify the root ID. So here I'm going to say document dot get element by ID and in the parentheses, in the double code, you need to specify root. Just save the changes, open the terminal and restart the development server because we just deleted the index file and created our own. So I'm going to just start the development server again. So here I'm going to say npm start. Make sure you are in the login system directory. So I'm going to just press enter to start the development server. This will start a new development server on localhost 3000. So as you can see, I don't have anything inside this React application. So let me just create my own component and add that inside this React strict component. So inside this source folder, I'm going to create a new folder by clicking on this new folder icon and specify a name to this folder, components. If you want, you can specify any name to this folder that doesn't matter. Just after that, inside these components, I'm going to create a new file and name this file user.js. I'm going to specify name to this file user.js. That's upon you what name you want to specify to this file. You can specify any name to this file that doesn't matter. Inside this file, I'm going to create a functional component. So first, we're going to understand how to create a functional component and then we'll look at how to create a class component in React. So let me first create here a functional component. So I'm going to first import the React module. So every component in React start by importing React module. Without React module, you couldn't create a React component. So here I'm going to say, import react from react and just out of that just down here i'm going to create a functional react component so let me just add here a command and say functional react component so just down here i'm going to create a simple function and specify a name to this function which is a user as you can see this is a simple javascript function and inside this function i'm going to return jsx so i'm going to just say here return so inside this return statement I'm going to simply say div dot container. This will create a division tag with a class container. In JSX, you specify class name instead of just class. We use class name here to specify classes to the JSX element. Once you create a container, let me just put h2 heading tag inside it and specify text user functional component. Now, just after that, you need to export this component so we can use it in other JavaScript files. So just down here, I'm going to say export default and specify the function name, which is user. 
So now using this statement, we can use this function in other JavaScript files. So let me save the changes back to the index.js and up here, don't forget first import the component. So up here, I'm going to say import, specify the name of the component, which is user. And in the double quote, specify the path where you have your component. Just specify dot forward slash and inside the components folder, we have user.js. So I'm going to specify here user. That's it. And just out of that, just inside this helper component, I'm going to just call here angle bracket and say user like this. Just save the changes and open your browser. As you can see, you have your component here. Now you can notice I'm using here closing tag as well for this user component. If you want, you can close this component here as well by specifying forward slash like this and just get rid of this closing element. This is how you can add component inside your React application. Now, as you know, to create React component, you use JSX. But why JSX is so important to create a React component? Let me show you. If I just create here a variable before this function, constant name is equal to, and in the double code, I'm going to put this heading, this one, like this. And just out of that, inside this h2 heading tag, instead of specifying this hard-coded value, I'm going to just simply specify curly braces and inside it I'm going to specify this name variable. Let me save the changes and reload the react application. As you can see I'm going to get the same result. As you can see I can use variables inside my HTML. Isn't it cool to use JavaScript inside HTML? It is. So next we're going to take a look at the cool things you can do with JSX.